Hey guys, it's John, your Vintage Geek, producer and host of the Super Awesome Geek Show, one of the bros of Battlefront, and welcome to another Super Awesome Geek Show video. When I was a child, I had this really cool green lizard woman. And for the longest time as an adult, I couldn't remember what series or what line that figure had come from. I used to just use her in the cantina when I was playing with my Star Wars figures in the late 70s, early 80s. She'd go on daring attempts to thwart G.I. Joe with Cobra Commander and his evil forces. And sometimes would act as a minion of Skeletors while trying to take out the masters of the universe. It wasn't until I was in my 20s when I found out that she was actually from the Flash Gordon, the greatest adventure of all, action figure line by Mattel. I always remember seeing her in a package or even loose, and she was always crazy expensive. I never wanted to spend the money to buy her, even though I always had fond memories of this character and playing with this action figure as a child. Somehow the nostalgia eventually just caught up with me, and I managed to find one, I think I was in my late 30s, at, I think it was around $50 in the package, and I consider this package to be pretty darn good. It's pretty mint in my opinion. I'm extremely happy to have this figure, and today I'm going to share her with you in this video. So the box art on this thing I think is fantastic. Mattel made the Flash Gordon line the greatest adventure of all. It's an action figure from the TV Spectaculars. <laughs> that says, oh, I love that. Still has the price tag on it. Originally this was $349. I paid around $50 for it, so that's quite a... A gain for your investment, right? <laughs> the lizard woman here, in all her glory, she's in this beautiful bubble. Has a nice staff slash spear kind of thing. It's just plain solid white. No real uh, paint app on this other than the eyes. They just molded her, I think, in two different color plastics. She does have, I think what it is, is there was tape originally that was holding the staff... And you can see a little blob of that tape that is discolored and stuck to her leg. I, no matter how much I've tried to shake it off, I can't do it. But eh, that's the only flaw in the whole thing. And it's not really a flaw. The figure's perfect. It's just this piece just happened to stick there in the way that it fell once it got de-stickered, de-taped. The tape came off from the side of the package holding that staff in there. But anyways, whatever. I love the artwork here for Beast Man and Ming the Merciless and all the other cronies they have here on the front with Flash Gordon himself there on the bottom. I can't remember who was a good guy and who was a bad guy on this one. I think Dr. Zarkov was a good guy with him. Ming we know was the bad, you know, the main bad guy. And then I think the dude there, the dwarf with the angel wings... I think he was a good guy. And the lizard woman, I believe, is a bad guy. So it's just kind of eh. The lion, I think, is the one I don't remember. Because the beast man guy was a bad guy. But the lion, I do think he was a good guy, wasn't he? I, I'm just, I just don't remember. It's been so long since I've seen the show. But all these, thing, all these guys were available as characters to collect in the Flash Gordon action figure line. Now flip it over to the back here and get you a spotlight on the back. Flash Gordon, 4-inch action figures, collect them all, each sold separately. Thun the Lion Man, like I said, I think he was a good guy. Ming the Merciless was a bad guy, we know he was the leader of the bad guys. The Lizard Woman with her staff, she was one of the few that actually did come with a weapon or an accessory in, in any, any account. Had this awesome tail, I don't know if you could see that when we were looking at the front. The Lizard Woman. Flash Gordon himself came with his little pistol. And Dr. Zarkov and Beastman were available later in 1980. This figure was from 1979. Dr. Zarkov, like I said, I think he was a good guy and Beastman was a bad guy. 
but yeah, I just have extremely like fond memories of playing with this action figure, and I'm very happy to have one in such a in 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 the packaging in such nice shape. It's it's just it's a, it's it's like it's an honor to own this thing. <laughs> <laughs> if there is such a feeling. I, I just love these old vintage action figures. I love vintage collections. I love vintage packaging. This is basically roughly the same size and shape as the Star Wars and G.I. Joe 3 and 3 quarter inch packaging. So, I mean, it fits well when you're collecting those two lines, uh, you know, with in the size-wise for uh, going on with these. I think that just became a standard after Star Wars, right? This came out only like a year or so after Star Wars. It's like they jumped on the first... Mattel must have just jumped on the first uh, sci-fi action film that came along with the success of Star Wars and the action figures through 1978. And they just went, okay, 1979, we're having these guys come out. But I do think they only made the one series. They went into 1980 and made the ones that you saw on the back. Like I actually have Dr. Zarkov here loose. Some of these I managed to find at thrift stores uh and I don't think people realize what they are. So I managed to find Dr. Zarkov at a thrift store. Picked him up for just a couple dollars. Actually, I don't even think he was that. It was like a dollar or less. And uh, also found a Ming the Merciless at one of them at a thrift store. And this is pretty nice shape, I, I think. He's pretty cool. But they all had the standard 5 POA. The arms would move up and down. The legs could go up and down, so he could be sitting down. Hey, I'm sitting down, and stuff. And uh, Ming had some pretty good paint app on his face and everything. His body, his gloves, uh, belt up around his neck and shoulders, and his boots, I believe, were paint app. Pretty nice figures. I like them overall. They're they're very similar to Star Wars figures, being the five POA, same size. You know, as a kid, you could play with them together with your action figure with your Star Wars action figures. I mean, that's what I did. I can't remember having anyone other than the Lizard Woman when I was a child. We may have had Ming cuz when I found him he sure did look familiar, or it could have just been a friend of ours that had Ming and he played with Ming with his Star Wars action figures. I think a lot of times like when we were children, our action figures would all group up together. So by the time we got into Transformers and He-Man and all that stuff, we had Flash Gordon, we had He-Man, we had Star Wars, we had G.I. Joe, we had Transformers, we had Thundercats, we had um, Air Raiders, we had, you know, like everything was just playing together in the same universe. Black Star, Battle Beasts, you know, like even the Muscle Men got in on the action, the Battlestar Galactica guys, Mask. Mask was always a, a division of G.I. Joe that we, in our in our minds... You know, Silverhawks got into the mix once in a while. It didn't matter that they were different sizes. They were just the, the in our minds, they were just the giants who were like living out in the outskirts or something. And they'd come in to help, you know, or they were just from another planet. People from different planets could be different sizes. You know, it was just, it didn't matter. And of course, with Transformers, that didn't matter at all because the vehicles were generally, you know, smaller than the 3.75 inch figures when they transformed. You know, you couldn't fit a 3.75 inch into a, a Transformer vehicle once it was transformed, in most cases. But when they were in robot mode, it didn't matter because the robots in the cartoons were always taller than people anyway. So it's kind of like they were almost to scale in robot mode to what they would have been as a, you know, compared to a 3.75 inch figure. So, yeah, that never, Transformers, like, never, we never had to come up with a story reason as to why they were bigger. <laughs> but that was pretty much the only line that we had to come, you know, otherwise we came up with story ideas in our imagination and we'd figure out why characters were different sizes and how they could be working together and things like that, you know. So, I mean, that just allowed the imagination to flow, the imagination to run. It just ran wild, and I know in more than one occasion, like, even within the same universe, characters were doing different things. Chewbacca was often the leader of the good guys. <laughs> you know, I don't know why, but he just looked like a great leader, and uh, a lot of times the lizard woman would end up on the good side, and she'd be Chewbacca's right-hand gal, you know, and, and they would be going on adventures together. 
But anyways, I'm John, I'm out of here. I just wanted to give you guys a quick spotlight, a quick look at Flash Gordon, the greatest adventure of all. I wanted you to see these action figures, I wanted you to check out the packaging, and just share the love of this lizard woman like I, like I do. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, oh, great figure, I, I love it. I hope you guys do too, and uh, maybe this will be something that gets added to your list. Or anything, or, you know, do you remember these this line of figures? Did you have any as a child? Did you have a fondness for them? Were you like me in like going through years of your life, never knowing exactly where that was from, but saying, man, I know I had this figure when I was a kid, but I can't for the life of me figure out what line it was from. I want to get another one of these. And I want to know if there's any figures that are out there like that. It doesn't have to be Flash Gordon. Maybe it could be something else that you had where you're just like, oh my gosh, I totally remember having this toy as a child. But since it wasn't something that was from one of the mainstream lines that we still talk about most of the time today, you just can't figure out what line that figure was from. And maybe it took you 20 years to figure that out. I just love hearing those kind of stories. I mean, I've shared mine with you. And yeah, if you want, just leave a comment and share that. And uh, it would be pretty cool. Thanks for the subscriptions. Thanks for watching another video from the Super Awesome Geek Show. I'm out of here. I'll talk to you guys next time. And may the force be with you, always.